worship. Lord, we're so hungry for you today. for you, God. Father, we worship you today. We thank you that you promised if we hunger and if we thirst for righteousness, we will be filled. Thank you for filling us tonight. Thank you for filling us with your presence and your power because you are a man of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Come on, put your hands together and give you a great God, great glory. Come on, give him great praise. Will you greet somebody with a handshake or a hug and let them know I'm so glad you came to church today. Thank you so much, worship team. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're in a very special service today. Today is our ordination service. Amen. And we will be recognizing and ordaining elders and deacons and pastors, ministers, those who are in the ministry of helps. We'll be ordaining them because how many know that God wants to put his church in order? The Bible says that all things should be done decently and in order. How many believe that God is a God of order? Now, the question becomes, what are we organizing? I would like us to go to Mark chapter number two, see what church leadership looks like. What does church leadership look like? And what is God calling the elders, the ministers, the deacons, the deaconesses? What is God calling those who are in the ministry of helps? What is he calling them to do? How many have ever been to a church before and you wondered, what is this person's job? I know that they sit in the front row. I know they wear a collar, right? Come on, can we just keep it real today? Have you ever just walked into church and wondered, what, what's their job? Amen. And how many know that it's important if we're talking about ordination, we need to understand how God wants to put the house in order. Amen? Let's go to Mark chapter number 2, verse number 1. Mark chapter number 2, verse number 1. And when you get there, say, Lord, I love your word. And when he returned to Capernaum, this is Jesus, after some days, it was reported that he was at home. Somebody say, Jesus is in the house. <laughs> Glory to God. And many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them. Verse number three. And they came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. I would like to preach a message entitled, Will You Carry Me? What are elders supposed to be doing? What are ministers supposed to be doing? What are deaconess supposed to be doing in deaconess? Somebody say, will you carry me? Come on, do me a favor. Look at somebody and help me announce the title of this message. Look at someone and ask them the question, will you carry me? Here it is. And they came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. When they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. When they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw what? Not his faith. They saw who? Their faith. Here's point number one. Here it is. Leaders here at 180 Church, servant leaders, they are called, church leadership, they're called to carry others to Christ in faith. Oftentimes, as Christians, you talk to someone, and they will tell you what church they go to. They will tell you who their pastor is. But they never learn how to carry somebody to Jesus. But I have a spiritual suspicion today. I have a Holy Ghost hunch today that somebody came to an 1130 service because you would say, you just got to get me to Jesus. I may be broken. I may be hurting. I might be toe up from the flow up, but if you can just get me to Jesus. 
I don't need you to get me to your theological persuasion. I don't need you to get me to your denominationalism. I didn't ask you to get me to your pastor or your preacher. If you can just get me to, oh, I wish I had somebody help me out today. How many know he's a way maker? He's a promise keeper. He's a bridge over troubled water. How many would say I need him in the morning? I need him in the afternoon. I need him in the evening. And late in the midnight hour, how many know that you always can depend on Jesus? So what do leaders look like in 180 Church? A group of people that carry others to Christ in faith. Do me a favor. Look at somebody and say, will you believe God for me? Will you believe God for me? I'm talking about when I lose my faith. I'm talking about when I don't want to come to church. I'm talking about after I get ordained and I don't want to be a minister no more. I don't want to be a deacon no more. I don't want to be a pastor no more. Will you still carry me to Jesus and believe God for me when I don't even believe God for myself? Somebody shout out, carry me, carry me, carry me. Just get me to Jesus. I know healing's there. I know deliverance there is there. I know understanding is there. I know he's the alpha and the omega. I know he's the beginning and the end. I know he's the first and the last. If you can just get me to Jesus, I know that everything will change. If you believe once you get to Christ, everything changes, put your hands together and give your great God great glory. Look at what happens here. Verse number, verse number five. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, watch this. Son, you're what? Jesus did what only God can do because how many know that he's more than just a man? He's God. And look at what happens. Verse number six. Now some of the scribes were sitting there. These are the church folk. <laughs> These are the people, watch this, that go to church and think they know more about God than everybody. Well, I know, the, I know what the Bible says about that. I know what the word says about that. Look at what the scribes say. Look at what they say. They were sitting there questioning in their hearts. They didn't say it out of their lips. Watch this. Have you ever said something in your heart? Try to discredit what God was doing in somebody else's life. In your heart. You didn't say it out of your mouth. But you said it in your Jesus has proven that he's God by knowing what's going on in people's hearts. Look at what happened. Verse number seven. Why does this man speak like that? They didn't say it, but they were thinking it. He is blaspheming. Well, who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus, look at this, perceiving in his spirit. How many know you can trick the preacher, you can trick the pastor, but you can't trick the Holy Ghost? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, God is not mocked. You can't trick God. Perceiving in the spirit that they thus question themselves within themselves, and he said to them, "Look at this. Look at Jesus. Why do you question these things in your hearts? Which which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise, take up your bed, and what? But that you may know." Jesus is saying, I'm doing this so you can know who I am. The Son of Man, this is the promised Messiah. This term, the Son of Man, it means he's the one that all of the Old Testament prophets were talking about. He's God with skin on. So you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to do what? To forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, verse number 11, I say to you, rise, take up your bed and do what? And he rose and immediately picked up his bed and he went out before them all so that they were all amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw anything like this. What are leaders called to do here in 180 Church? Those that will stand here and they will uh, get a certificate and they'll have their license and they'll be ordained. What are they called to do? They are called to carry people to Jesus. The people in our community that cannot get to Christ. How many will testify? Sometimes you can't get to Christ. You need somebody to carry you. How many would say today, if it had not been for the grace of God, you will not be here today, but your grandmother's prayers carried you. It was a preacher's prayers that carried you. It was a husband. 
it was a wife. How many are grateful that we serve a God that when we can't get to him, he can call somebody to carry us? Watch this. And the Bible says that it was so busy that they couldn't get in. How many know you've traveled too far to give up now? You've believed God for too long to give up on that child, to give up on that nephew, to give up on that niece. You need to say, I've been believing God all these years. I want allow what I see in the natural to stop me. I'm going to rip the roof off. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm willing to have this spiritual stamina and to exert the spiritual strength to rip off the roof and let you down. Not so Jesus can see you. I want him to see my faith. How many are grateful that we can believe God for other people, that God can see our faith, and he can do something that he never did before? Jesus said, now since you did something you've never done, I'm going to forgive sin in front of people that would criticize me. I'm going to do something so awesome that it will confuse your critics. I'm grateful that we serve a God that can see our faith and heal other people. If you're grateful for that, put your hands together and give him glory. Somebody shout out, carry me, carry me. Don't judge me, carry me. Don't talk about me, carry me. That's what leaders do. Leaders are too busy carrying folk. They don't have time to gossip. They don't have time to slander. They don't have time to talk about people. They're too busy carrying communities to Christ so that we can believe God for other people. That we don't have time to be with drama because we are leaning on Jesus. Because we don't know when somebody may have to carry us lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your oh somebody help me out because you don't know right it might be long and you don't know that one day I might need you to carry me and that's what a leader does a leader says you know what I'm going to carry you because one day I might need you to do what I might need you to carry me. What else should leaders do? Let's look. Let's go to Luke. Let's go here. Let's go to Dr. Luke, chapter number 10. Let's go to Dr. Luke, chapter number 10. Let's see what leaders should do. Yes, we are ordaining elders and deacons and ministers and deaconess today. Yes, we are acknowledging the ministry of helps today. Yes, they will be licensed by the state of Michigan to preach, to teach, to marry, to bury. But what does that mean? Every time we gather together, what does that mean in this church? Point number one, church leadership carries other people to Christ in faith. Somebody say carry me. Here's point number two. Point number two is this. Church leadership takes risk on the forgotten. You want to know what an elder does in this church? Do you want to know what a minister, a deacon, a deacon, those that will be ordained today, what's their job? What's their role and responsibility? Their job is to do what? To take risks on the forgotten. Let us go, Luke, chapter number 10. Let us look at verse number 25. When you get there, say, Lord, I love your word. Here it is. And behold, a lawyer stood up to him to test, to put him to the test, saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Verse 26, he said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And do what? What is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying that when salvation is working in you, you're going to love me and love others. He's not saying you can work for your salvation. But when salvation is working in you, you're going to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and you're going to love others. Amen? Verse 26, and he said to him, you have... He, and he said to him, you have, an you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. Verse 29. But he, but he, 
desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? How many know that we always can justify our disobedience? We always can find ways to do what we want to do. So he said, well, who's my neighbor, Jesus? He said, okay, you want to know who your neighbor is? Let's talk about this. Are you with me in verse number 30? A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, a man of another race, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he sat him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Somebody say, carry me. And the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, take care of him. I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among robbers? Verse 37, he said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. What should church leadership be doing? We have to learn to take risks on the forgotten. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine one day perhaps you see some church people going to church and you saw them after you were so beat up, there was nothing but a life have left your body. What do you do when you've been beat up half dead on the side of the road like the city of Detroit? What do you do when you're beat up half dead on the side of the road like the city of Pontiac? What happens when you're beaten and half dead on the side of the road like Flint, like Saginaw? You need somebody that has enough compassion to say, I'll carry you. I'll get my hands dirty. I'll carry you. I won't worry about myself, but I'll worry about you. I'll carry you. Yes, I know it's risky, but I will carry you. And the reason why I'll carry you, the reason why I'll pour in my resources, the reason why I'll get my hands dirty, because I know that I didn't deserve him to carry me. But because of his goodness, because of his grace, everybody left me half dead on the side of the road. I have a spiritual suspicion. I have a Holy Ghost hunch that somebody came to an 1130 service because you would say, Lord, I'm so, so grateful today. I'm thankful that when I was beaten and half dead on the side of the road, mama wasn't there. Daddy wasn't there. Baby daddy wasn't there. Baby mama wasn't there. But Jesus... Husband wasn't there. Wife wasn't there. Children wasn't there. Preacher wasn't there. Teacher wasn't there. But Jesus, when I was half dead on the side of the road, beaten up by sin, beaten up by the things of this world, Lord, you didn't pass me by. Pass me not, oh gentle Savior. Would you hear my humble cry? Why on others thou art calling, Lord, don't pass me me by. I'm calling on you, Savior. I'm calling on you, Savior. Would you hear my humble cry? How many are grateful that we serve a God that when everybody else forgets about us, he's willing to take the time to pour in the oil of gladness, to pour in the oil of his spirit, to pour in the wine of his word, to disinfect our wounds, to take time to wrap us up in worship and carry us and take care of us. And just in case we don't know he did it, as soon as we get well, he comes back again and says, don't forget, if it had not been for me on your 
outside. It wasn't you that did. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine being unconscious and then waking up all healed? Can you imagine yourself being unconscious and then you wake up one day saying, who took care of me? Who was willing to take the time to take a risk on me? Who was willing to love me when everybody else loved, didn't love me? I thank God that we serve an awesome God that is willing to be moved with compassion toward us. If you're grateful for that, come on, put your hands together and give your great God great glory. Somebody say, carry me. I'm beaten and half dead, but will you carry me? I'm broken, but would you carry me? I know I'm wounded, but would you carry me? And this is what leaders do. Leaders in this church, those that we are ordaining, we are organizing them so that they could carry you to Christ in faith so that they can take a risk on you when nobody else will take a risk on you, that God will use them to take a risk on you. What's the third thing that church leadership does? Here's the number three. The third thing is they seek to serve, not to be served. When I got called into ministry, I was Bishop Merritt's armor bearer. And what, what I've come to learn is that oftentimes in churches, leaders are seeing who will serve them and not who they can serve. Oftentimes, church leadership is about somebody calling you by a title and seeing what they can do to try to be on your good side. Because, you know, you're a minister. You're a deaconess. You're an elder. You're a pastor. That's not what this is about. This is about you finding out who the servant leaders are in your church. Because it's not about a title. It's about picking up a towel. Because Jesus, before he picked up the crown, he picked up the cross. But before he got on the cross, he picked up a towel. And he was willing to wash the feet. Now listen, ladies. Oh, listen. These apostles, they didn't have pedicures. You know, y'all, y'all walking, y'all go, y'all, you know, get the pedicures and the, you know, the shellac. Do all that. They didn't have shellacs, pastor. They didn't have shellacs. They didn't have a manicure. These were, they walked around with all types of stuff on their feet. And Jesus said, I want to show you how much I love you. Judas, come over here. I know you were about to betray me. But I love you so much. I'm going to still wash your feet. That's what a servant leader does. A servant leader doesn't look at the person but looks at Christ. A servant leader says, I'm not looking to be served. I'm looking to serve. A servant leader says, it's not about me. I'm willing to take a risk on people that other people have forgotten about. A servant leader says, God has been too good to me for me to think about myself. I'm going to think about how to serve other people. Now watch this. If you take care of God's house, ooh, I'm going to get happy now. If you take care of God's house, he will take care of your house. Now, some of you will say, well, pastor, what about my children? If you take care of somebody else's child, God will make sure by the power of the Holy Ghost, God will not forget about your children. If you're willing to lay down your life for somebody else, the Lord is faithful. The Bible says God is not mocked. Wherever a man sows, he reaps. The Bible says don't be weary in well-doing. So I don't know who you are out there, whether you are a servant leader that's about to be ordained or those that are just serving other people. I want to encourage you right now that God sees your faithfulness. He sees your labor of love. Don't be weary in well-doing. They that wait on the Lord, he will renew your strength. You will mount up with wings like eagles. You will run and not be weary. You will walk in not faith. Do good unto all men while you have opportunity, especially those that are in the household of faith. And God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you will reap. If you have been sowing prayer, you are about to reap an answer. If you've been sowing sacrifice, God is about to open up a door for you. You need to say, Lord, you have carried me, so help me carry others. Somebody shout out, Lord, carry me, Lord, carry me. Number four, 
May I please have the elders come up? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, worship team. Come on, worship team. Amen. How many know that when we go into this time of ordination, that this is a time of worship? This is a time of prayer. This is a time of praise. Amen? Remember, when you see and you hear these leaders' names called, I want to encourage you to pray for them. Amen? Because if you sow prayer for them, God is going to cause you to reap a harvest for yourself. I said, if you sow prayer for them, God's going to cause you to reap your answer. Amen? Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Elder Corey Balder. Glory to God. Elder Freddie Williams. Thank you, Jesus. Elder Lev Montgomery. Thank you, Jesus. Elder Roosevelt Bell. Thank you, Jesus. Pray for your elders. Come on, church. Amen. Come on, worship team. Give us something that we can yes, bring before the Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Give myself away. Come on, church. Open up your mouth and sing it out. I give myself away so you can use me. Jesus. Give myself away. By your spirit. Deacons and deaconesses. Oh, come on, church. Church, lift up a prayer for Deacon Charles Thomas. Yes, God. Deacon Jason Young. Deacon Joshua Ashford. Lord, use our deacons. Deaconess Crystal Sanford. Use our deaconess. Deaconess Danielle Bird. Thank you, Jesus. Deaconess Ebony. All right. Glory to God. Come on, church. Deaconess Felicia Johnson. Lord, we pray for Felicia. I give myself away so you Deaconess Lucille Bridges. Thank you. I give myself away for Deaconess Lucille. Paulette Callaway. Lord, we pray for Paulette. Give myself away. Deaconess Sharon Bird. So you can use me. I give myself away. Thank you, Jesus. By your spirit, by your spirit, God. Lift these up in prayer. By your spirit. Your deacons and deaconess. So you can use me. I give myself, come on church. I give myself, I give myself to you. Here's your opportunity to worship. Lord, we give you glory. My life is on my own. Father, we pray for the elders and the deacons. We pray for the deaconesses, Jesus. May they give themselves to you. Would you be glorified in their lives? Would you be high and lifted up? And may your train fill the temple of their hearts. May they give themselves to you. Thank you, Jesus. Glorify you. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in the elders' lives. We thank you for what you're doing in the deacons and the deaconesses. Thank you that you're using them to carry us to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, 180 Church, put your hands together and give God glory. Amen. amen. Oh, yes. Ministry of Helps. Thank you, Lord. Minister Barbara Floyd. Continue to worship, church. Minister Katrina Moss. So Minister Cynthia Clayton. Minister Erica Clayton. I give myself away. 
Minister so John you Clayton. Can you use me? I'm gonna stay there. Give myself away. Oh yeah. Thank you. Minister Otis Bird. Thank you, Lord. Give Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Minister so Arkita Corbin. Can you use her life. Give myself away. Minister Sabrina Black. Oh, yeah. Minister Davie Baker. So you can use me. Minister Rosalind Simpson. Thank you for what you're doing. Rosalind, like. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. In your life. Minister of Music, Abraham Baker. Lord, use Abraham for your glory. Use Abraham. And myself, use so Sonia you. White. Yeah. Minister Sonia. Thank you, God, for Sonia. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that you're moving mountains to these ministers. Father, we thank you that as I anoint them with oil, that you are giving them a double portion. Father, we thank you that you are showing yourself strong in their lives. And just like in the days of David when the oil flowed, Father, we pray that your oil will flow in their lives, Father. Father, we pray that no weapon formed against them will prosper. Father, we thank you that as they give themselves to you, you would give them wisdom to bandage the wounds that they see, that they would take risk to be willing to get their hands dirty for the forgotten. Lord, would you give them grace that when they need to be carried, they would allow others to carry them as well. All for your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and celebrate what God is doing to our ministers. Come on, church, open up your mouth. Come on. Glory to God. To you. I give myself away. Come on, church. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you for this woman of God. Thank you that you're healing her body. I thank you, Jesus, that you said in your word that those that abase themselves, they would be exalted. She abased herself today. And I pray you exalt her. Take everything that the devil has stolen, would you bore her openly in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, church. Give myself away. I give myself away. I give myself away. So you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, we love you today. Let's go to the book of Numbers. I want to show you something real quick. Numbers chapter 11, verse number 16. Children of Israel are transitioning from slavery to the promised land. And how many know that when you transition, you need revelation from the Holy Spirit. No matter what area in your life, you could be transitioning out of a job, in a relationship, whatever it is, you need God to give you revelation. And look at the revelation that God gives Moses through Jethro. It's called the Jethro Principle. Numbers chapter 11, verse number 16. When you get there, say, Lord, I love your word. Then the Lord said to Moses, gather for me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meetings and let them take their stand there with you. God is like, I want you to get leaders and I want you to come to church, essentially. This is the cultural equivalent to what's happening here. The tent of meetings will be what we would consider church today. Look at this, verse 17. And I will come down and talk with you there. And I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. And they shall do what? What shall they do? This is what the leaders here will do. 
all of us have areas of our lives that were wounded. All of us have areas of our lives that we've been beaten and left half dead. All of us have areas in our lives that we need somebody to carry us to Christ. And how many know that I can't do it by myself? How many know that my wife, my wife and I, we can't do it by ourselves? So God has selected the leaders that you just saw in order for them to bear the burden of carrying all of us to Jesus. Amen? How many are grateful for that? Are you grateful for that? I'm so thankful for that. I'm very thankful for that. Amen? <laughs> Glory to God. Will you get an offering in your hand today? Some of you may say, Pastor, I feel called to ministry. Why don't you talk to me after service? Some of you say, I, I feel called to be a deacon. I feel called to be a minister. I feel called to be an elder. I have a calling on my life. If that's you, come up to me after service. Amen? Will you get an offering in your hand today? The Bible says, give not grudgingly, nor of necessity. Give because God loves a... How many know God so loved us, he gave his best for us? He gave Jesus. Here's your opportunity to give. Here's your opportunity to give. I'm looking forward to carrying the city of Detroit to Christ. I'm looking forward to carrying Pontiac. Minister Barbara's here representing Pontiac. I'm so grateful. Carrying the city of Flint to Christ. I'm believing God. And he's going to use us to carry Saginaw to Christ. Because you don't know when you will need somebody to help you. Amen? I give myself away. Come on. I give myself away. If you need an envelope, just wave at us. I give myself away. I give myself away. So you can Somebody say, will you carry me? Somebody say, will you carry me? Will you carry me? Will you carry me? I give myself away so you can use Lord, I'm not much, but will you use me? Lord, I don't have it all together, but would you use me? I'm available, Jesus. Amen. Minister Moss, right behind you. There's a few people behind you. How many know that oftentimes we give ourselves to so many other things? But here's an opportunity to give ourselves to Christ. Amen. And here's your opportunity to believe God for somebody else. Glory to God. Somebody say, I got a testimony. Some of you know my oldest niece. She hasn't communicated with my family for over a year. My mother hasn't heard from her. My sister hasn't heard from her in over a year. So Kiara's 15. She'll be 16 this year. So she's one year and one day older than Isabella. So she'll be 17 this year. And for one year, no one heard from her. Nobody knew where she was. But how many know when you take care of God's house, he'll take care of your house? Now, y'all ain't hearing me today. I guess it's only about three people in here that's got that. Oh, I got a testimony, y'all. <laughs> yeah. We kept giving young people scholarships. We kept doing things like Urban Round Bar Classic. We kept adopting children. I kept looking at 16-year-olds, but I was thinking about my own niece the whole time. Have you been there before? Helping everybody else out, but you're wondering, God, when you're going to help me? And this week, my niece reached out to my mother. Now she's going to go see my mother. Amen? Somebody say, I got a testimony. Oh, he's able. If you do your part, he'll do his part. Amen? Father, thank you for gift and giver. Use these offerings all for your glory. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. And amen. You're up under the direction of the ushers. Somebody say, will you carry me? Church leadership, we carry others to Christ in faith. Church leadership, we take risk on the forgotten. And church leadership, we seek to serve, not to be served. Leaders have the character and the competence to lead us to Christ. Amen. Come on, lift your voice in worship. Come on. I give myself. We give ourselves. I give myself to you. Away. I give my love, I give my love to you. My life is not my own. To you, to you I belong. We give ourselves. I give myself, I give myself to you. Glory to God. Somebody say, Will you carry me? Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Tanya, did we need to do the ministry of helps? Yeah. Come, let's do that. Amen. I don't want to forget nobody. Last service, we almost forgot one of our ministers. How many know when God calls you, do something? He won't allow stuff to go forward until. Well, look at David. I mean, you know, some of y'all are like, what do you mean? Well, the Bible. The prophet went to David's house and his brothers kicked him out the house. And God said, hold on for a second. We can't have this meeting without David. Amen? Glory to God. If you're in the ministry of helps, would you come up? We want to acknowledge you. Come on, ministry of yes. Yeah, come on up. We want to acknowledge you. Amen? I give myself. Oh, I like that. You're all together. Walk on the team. All together worthy. Our ministry of health. Hey. Alicia Perry. Angela Mormon. Barbara Radney. Clementine Bell. Denise Young, Dewan Isaac, Dewan, come on down here, Dewan. Dustin Stewart, Francis I thank God Harris. for Dewan. I think he's the oldest member in this church. Gladys Dewan. Brown, Dewan, how long have you been a member of this church? <laughs> Since you were what? Two years, five. <laughs> how old are you now? Amen. 20, 22 year member, amen? Grace. I love you, man. <laughs> Grace Island. Catherine Dunbar. All together. Come on, church. You pray for Nikki Bill. All together worthy. All together worthy. All together. All together each church we ask that you lift up and pray thank you Father God in the name of Jesus for those that have thank gone you by your God called by your spirit to the ministry thank you Father God Father we thank you for the ministry of helps thank you that they will hold up my hands just like Aaron and her had they lift up Moses' hands Father God thank you that they will lift up the hands of the elders and lift up the hands of the ministers lift up the hands of the deacons and the deaconesses thank you Lord that as our hands are lifted the house will have victory, just like in the days of Joshua. So, Father, we thank you that whatever the sole of our feet tread upon belongs to us because it already belongs to you. Use the ministry of helps. Everything that they've sown in your house, oh, God, may they reap it in their home for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, church, put your hands together and give God praise. Everybody, please stand. Somebody say this Saturday. This Saturday, we have a women's event that starts at 10 o'clock. 
we'll have food. Dr. Black will be preaching. He's one of the ministers here at the church, amen. Oftentimes, churches go all over the world to try to find talent to come and preach. But how many know everything that God has in his church is already here, amen? You don't have to fly nobody in. The Holy Ghost is already here. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. So I thank God for Minister Clayton and I thank God for the women that will be here. So come on. We're going to celebrate Mother's Day. Amen? All together beautiful. Come on. Let's lift up one, one more song of worship. Come on. Come on. Will you worship him today? Here I am. the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Come on, put your hands together and give your great God great glory. I love you 180 church. I love you.